Hello everybody, Malinka here and I'm back today with a review of The Cunning Man by Robertson Davies. Well, this book kept me, I would say, three or four nights awake because it was so, so good. So I picked this one out at a library sale and it costed like 30 euro cents and I normally go for books that are really, really damaged because this is a sign that the book was really good and people were reading it and they were just selling it so they would could buy new copies of it. So I read this very, very fast. I think it, it took last weekend, the whole weekend, because I couldn't sleep because of it. Uh, so Robertson Davies, I've never heard of this author. It's a Canadian author and it's a really good, good, good book. The whole book is about Dr. John Hula. He is a very, very clever man and a very calm and cool and chilled out and no stress type of person, which I absolutely adore. I am very panicky and very impulsive, so when I read about these types of people, I just love it. Uh, so this guy, uh, John, um, the whole book shows his whole life, basically. The story actually starts with the death of a priest, and he is invited to confirm the death and to sign the death certificate. So his principal says that he should actually check the body before signing that death certificate. However, one of his best friends, Charlie, is working in that church and Charlie says just sign the certificate because I've checked he is just dead by nature so following this death uh, there's a journalist trying to find out more about the death and trying to pour, trying to make um, some articles about the old Toronto so he is being interviewed about his life about I don't know, previous events that happened in Toronto. And this gives him the opportunity to tell us everything about his life, how he went to school, about his family, then about his um, career, about his love, about his, I don't know, his business. And at the end, he just becomes an all damn fool and he is okay with it. I just absolutely loved his attitude towards everything. I could not put it down because I loved his attitude towards sexuality, homosexuality, politics, religion, love. I really don't know. I, I could not, I didn't have any part of the book that I didn't like. I absolutely loved everything. Um, also, his main profession is a doctor, of course. He wanted to be a very different kind of doctor, not just a uh, surgeon. It was not his thing, even though he was work. He worked as a surgeon. His thing was diagnosis, and he said that the disease or the body should be considered together with the soul, with the habit. So he made his own business or his own clinic, um, trying to discover the disease, the causes, and everything, not just based on the body, but on the habits, on where the person lives, on what the person eats and how they think and everything. And this at the time was very revolutionary. So he was considered um, humanist or, I don't know, he was named a lot of things. <laughs> but uh, his neighbors started calling him the Cunning Man. So this is how it started, this nickname. Uh, the book made me think about Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak a lot because it has more or less the same structure. Both books start a, with a death. Both books uh, tell the story about a doctor who is more special. Both doctors go to war. Uh, both doctors have some issues with their love lives. And, and also this book has a lot of references to Russian literature. I don't know why he always talks about the war and peace and about Tolstoy and about Dostoevsky and about, I don't know, Tchaikovsky. So this immediately made me think of Dr. Zhivago. Anyways, this is a unique book, very, very unique. And one of the reviews says, the truth is, this is not just a novel to read, it's a book to live by. And I absolutely agree. I love the chill tone and the attitude towards any problem in any situation. I just love it.